G'day, fellas, and welcome. We are here. Game number two of week two of Outback Octagon 2. A lot of twos coming at you. Welcome to the second game of week two. This is happening right now in front of us. We saw two sheep get murdered by a monster. And three villagers working on a town center. Crackety here is placing his town center immediately next to Salami and says, you want to go? Let's go. And they are going right now against each other on the south side of the map. Two of the favorites heading into this game. Salami and Crackety. And you can see right now, we've got the chat on the screen. You can take a look at what they're saying to each other. Three minutes of treaty. It's going to mean absolutely nothing because these two, they're going to be locked in vicious battle throughout this game. Let's take a look at our players for this game and see where they've spawned in the 12 o'clock position. In the color orange, playing as the English, isolated, away from everybody else. It's Core. To the east side of the map, in the, in the 3 o'clock position, in the color red, placing his town center before the 5 minute mark. It's Give You Anxiety on the China. To his south, in the color blue, playing as the Rus. It's Anadand. To their south, in the color pink, playing as the Ottomans. It's Faye. Down to the south of the map. We've seen it once before. I'm sure we'll see it again. It's Crackety here. On the French. And Salami. On the Abbasid. To their north. In the color purple. Playing on his signature civilization. It's Recon. On the Mongols. And last but not least. In the west of the map. All by his lonesome self. On the French. In the color yellow. Wham01. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Uluru. We're here with a single sacred site in the center of the map. How many alliteration numbers, letters, digits can you get? Well, I don't know how many that was, but we, I think we did pretty well. For anybody who doesn't know Uluru, Uluru is a sacred site within Australia. It's actually not the world's largest rock. I did say that last time. Then I googled afterwards. I'm like, what is the world's largest rock? And it, it, it wasn't Uluru. Well, there we go. <laughs> ah, well, well, well. If it isn't the consequences of my own actions. Um, this, is an, this is an interesting start to say the least, isn't it? Let's, uh, let's switch over to somebody's perspective who's going to be a little bit less uh, aggressive early on. Look at this. <laughs> he, he threw in villagers inside the town center just to help out with the damage early on. He's like, I want to make sure that you can't sneak any vills out here. He's going to try. You can see exactly what's happening right now. He's trying to sneak villagers on the outside, but the town center's a place next to each other. Now, Crackety's done this enough times with the Chinese to know how this works. For anybody who hasn't watched the videos, we have casted a lot of Crackety games recently. And one of the things he's loved to do is go for a Barbican Rush early on. Oh, oh, a lot of damage right there. And when you go for that Barbican early on, really nice control from both of these players early on. Uh, when you go for the Barbican, it basically prevents your enemy from making villages. But there is a, wa a way around it. And it's this sneaky little way that these players are doing where you pop the villager out and immediately move it back in. You've got to select the villager and hit G straight away. There we go. Or you can see, I think he's just got it right clicked. Make sure you've turned on that option. And once you get to a critical mass of villagers, you're going to be able to pop them all out at the same time and make a run for it. That's going to be the best way to deal with this. Up towards the north of the map, though. A little, a few sheep coming through right now for core. 18 sheep. Playing it a little bit like a New Zealander. Over on the west side, wham. Going to be bringing those sheep in as well. He's got plenty out here as well. Seven. Of course, on the south side, Recon looking pretty solid here. Khan's on the move. There's a couple changes. And we do see the Vils did break away. It looks like Scouts went down. And a Villager goes down as well. So manages to take out quite a few. So they're doing the right thing. They, they know what they're doing. They know how they're playing. Uh, so you've, you've got to build up to a certain amount of Villagers. But it does mean the early game is a little bit more aggressive. Uh, you're fighting over resources a lot more. This is a hotly contested... Early, early game. So. The big question is. Oh, Lord. I'm, just, I'm, I'm reading Twitch chat right now. And I'm like, they're asking, is Drongo talking? I don't like it when they say that. So, the the one thing that the Abbasid's got going them here. 
<laughs> I'm actually getting trolled by Twitch chat. Gosh, I hate you, Twitch chat. You're so you're so damn annoying. So the one one thing the Abbasid have got going for them right here is the potential for a Dark Age Ram. Now, it doesn't look like Salami's going to go for it, but I genuinely think he could do it, and it would be kind of crazy. The problem he would have, I don't think he would kill the town center in time. That, Like, I suspect Crackety would probably be able to get up his second landmark. I mean, it would expose the king, but then the king would just run away, right? So it, it wouldn't really get you a lot. It does secure up your, your land, though. Anyway, let's take a little bit of a look over towards the east side. We've got GUA on the Chinese. A civilization he's very competent with. We've seen him many a times. And he spawned quite close here to Anatan. So I suspect we're going to have some early aggression here. And take a look at this Anatan with the beautiful, the beautiful little hunter cabin coming through right now. 41 gold a minute on this bad boy. He's got a couple more options down here. And the age up about to come through for Wham. We're right on board with him as the School of Cavalry comes down towards his enemies. Up towards the north side, though. Age up coming through now. Council Hall for core. Definitely, if I had to pick a player, if I had to say, all right, you know what? I like this guy's chance at winning. It's Cause. The reason why I like Cause spot so much is because not only does he have all of this behind himself to expand to, his nearest enemy, GUA, has got an enemy very close to him, which means that he's probably going to be locked in battle with that. It's going to buy him a little bit of time. At the same time, he's got Wham over towards the west side to worry about, but Wham's pretty isolated himself. Might have to deal with Recon, because I guess, realistically, Recon's probably just going to be looking for a very fast castle into a couple of King Snipes. He's got two sitting right next to each other. Silver Tree now coming through for Recon. Looking to do a bit of trading. If there's one thing you want to know about Recon, it's that he loves to trade. We've got a lot of big traders in this game. We got Wham. We got Recon, two of the world's most famous traders. And the Ajups come through. Anatan, the first one off the blocks. Core following quickly. Fei Chan directly behind. She's got a nice little spot down here. Got all of her food, wood, and gold under the TC. She's looking like a Mongol player right now, the way this spawn is coming together for her. Once again on the pink this week. Great to see her back. Looking forward to seeing what she can pull out today. She's fortunately got lots of gold. Obviously, last week, <laughs> last week it was a bit tough for Faye. She uh, she found herself up up uh, up Shit Creek without a paddle, and uh, it wasn't the most uh, wasn't the most happy time for her. The age ups continue coming through. Wham! Also aging up. School of Cavalry and a double stable coming down for Wham. Looking to move into knights early on. Going to be looking to put on the pressure. Second town center thrown down for court immediately. He's got the ball right here. Eight fills ready to begin working on that ball as well. Look at the resources Core's got here. Don't expect to see a farm out of him for a long time. Plenty of gold up here towards this north side as well. He's going to have an absolute blast. I'll tell you what, my money's on Core. <laughs> oh, no. GUA. He's going to be a little bit anxious at this point. It's, it's not a hunting cabin that's in the middle of the forest. It's a wooden fortress that's in the middle of the forest. He walls himself in and says, Yeah, I don't mind if I do. Just going to keep myself safe here. Barbican going to be firing down upon that scout from Core. And GUA. I mean, realistically, this doesn't hurt him that much. It, it, it's a little bit annoying. But how do you deal with this? I mean, realistically, you can't chop through. Now, granted, I don't think Anatan can see onto the other side. But, I mean, maybe he could look to get textiles. That could be something. Villagers making a break for it. Did manage to take one down pretty low. We'll ride on board on the south side as the age up start coming through. Economic wing going to be in on the way through for Salami. But Crackety already with the knights out. Village is going to get caught out of position here. A lot of these guys are low health already. And now we see a house going to get thrown down in an emergency. Knight going to be running in. He's going to be able to pick up some kills here. Crackety, first kill, second kill. Looking for a third one. Going to be able to find it. Scout looking to try and block. He's doing the runaround on him right now. And Salami not having a good early game here. Both of these players. It's, it's a classic case of of chicken. You know, they, they both had the opportunity to cancel the town center, move somewhere else, and both of them said, no, I am staying right here. And I think we've all been in that position in life. Look, a little bit, a little bit, uh, what's the word? Philosophical. We've all been in that position in life before where we've said, you know what? I was here first and I'm not going to give up based just on principle. And the other guy comes in and he comes in a little bit harder and he's like, actually, you are going to give up. And you're like, no, I'm not. And you know, it's, it's that sunk cost fallacy. 
where you say, oh, salami, oh, salami. It's that sunk cost fallacy where you say, well, I've already invested 50 seconds in building this town center. And I can see you've got three villages here. I know you're going to get the town center up, but I'm already invested. So I might as well be invested because if I let you, if I cancel right now and let you get away with this, then it means that you're going to have the advantage over me. And I don't want that. I'd rather, you know, I would rather both of us be damaged. And that's exactly what we see right now. And you can see that Crackety is having a field day out here, keeping Salami off the villagers early on. He's struggling though. He's struggling keeping that head above water. 19 population at the moment for Salami. Crackety up to 30 villagers. Salami doing his best to to stay in the game, but it, it, it starts to feel terrible at this point just because of how much power his enemies got over the top of him. Nice little block there. Scout managing to keep it alive. You can see him going for a run around once again. No ranged armor. It's not really going to matter. We'll check in on the north side as there are now knights outside the base of GUA. Arrow slits firing off. I'm not sure exactly how he's got line of sight on everything. And the age up already starting to come through now for his opponent. Going to be looking to throw down a barracks here. Obviously, he doesn't have access to the wood on this south side. Just simply because, well, there's a town center in his way. So going to be looking to move into Spears. He's on 20 villages now against Crackety's 31. And my fear is that Recon, upon hitting Castle Age, will look to take out both of these players. But Crackety, it looks like he's got trouble. As Wham starts to hit his villages, and all of a sudden, the tale turns for the worse. Recon reaches the Castle Age, and it definitely feels like both of these players on the south side are being kept down. Even Wham coming in and doing a little bit of hurt. He's moving into a second town center over on that west side. Up towards the north. And look at this. Look at this. Look at this. 3TC. Core laughing right now. It, it is a classic case of Core L. Maybe it's a bit of Core W as well. And GUA. Trying his best to keep the Vils alive. Really struggling early on here. Up against an outpost. Seven archers in the outpost, by the way. Or the wooden fortress. And a knight composition. Did... I don't think GUA deleted those vills. I, I, I'm pretty sure they were just dead vills. I, I was going to wonder. They all look so perfectly dead on the ground. I'm like, is this a classic vill delete coming through from GUA? We've seen him go for the vill delete before. Hasn't always worked out for him. But in this game, perhaps this is the one. No, it wasn't a vill delete. Not this time. 11, 10 villagers now inside that town center. And you can see the TCs are working each other down. GUA really struggling right now. Battering Ram going to be coming up. Going to be threatening this town center. Remember, the king is still inside. And GUA... Struggling to keep the head above water. He's on 24 villages at the moment compared to Anatan on 35. Now GUA going to be looking to expand out over on this east side. Yet to move into additional resources. You can see he's actually going for a castle age, GUA. So I'm not sure exactly what happened here, what the plan was. But definitely didn't suspect aggression coming from Anatan. That was very much the case. And look at Wham. Wham looking to try and spot out a king. Any, any kings around here? No kings? All right, king. You keep doing you. Now those knights coming out. Remember that the lancers... Coming through from Recon. Going to be a little bit stronger than the Lance or, or from the Knights of, of Wham. But obviously Wham, if he looks to go for a Royal Institute in the Castle Age, the tides will turn. Age up now coming through from Faye as well. She's into the Castle Age and she's having a cracker of a game already. Really looking good for her. She goes for the meta early on. Wouldn't be surprised if she looks to pick up some relics out here. Obviously, Recon's in the Castle Age, but no sign that he's going to be moving into... Into... Uh, uh, prayer tents just yet. Knights against lancers. And if there's anything that these two on the south side want, it is these guys to be fighting. Two favorites in this game. French. That being the French of Wham. And Mongols. The Recon. One of the best Mongol players in the world. Down on the south side. It looks like the battering ram did come through. Apologies for not showing it off sooner. Looks like a villager did go down. So the first of the rams... Taking a lot of damage here. You can see that Salami's going to bring it back. Try for a repair. Core reaches the castle edge. And up towards the north side. I mean, GUA. Where's that king? Where's that king? King, where are you? Has the king made a move? I don't even know where the king is. Oh, the king's inside here. Oh, he's popped out. Oh, this isn't good. Oh, GUA struggling. GUA really struggling. It looks like he's popped the boots. Movement speed has gone through the enhanced marches for anybody playing Hon out there. What are, they, what are they called? The phase boots in, in Dota 2. He's popped him. He's doing a little bit of a run around, trying to keep it alive. Keep in mind, he's got that ranged armor. That's going to keep him alive well against these archers. No plus one at ranged attack, but the knights are going to be what do the damage. And you can see him trying to get the block. Wants to prevent the, the king from coming back towards the Barbican. Looks like he might be able to loop around. Needs to give himself a bit of space here. 
and he manages to get back to the Barbican. The king jumps inside. Very, very low health. He manages to keep the king alive a little bit longer, but the battering rams are coming through. A big army from Anatan, and it looks like GUA might be in trouble on this east side, down towards the south side of the map. The numbers continue to build here for Wham, though. He's really got quite a sizable force here. We got battering rams on battering rams on the south side. Look at this. You got TC, main TC against the... The, the ETC king comes out. He baits the attacks from the town center with the king so that the villagers are able to tank up a little bit longer. Everybody gets back inside. We'll head back up towards that top side. King's still in the Barbican. He's going to try for a, a, a block once again. Let's see if he's getting it. Villagers still going down. GUA trying to fight the king though. Seven health. That's it. Anatand takes out GUA. The first kill of the game going over to Anatand. And now down towards the south side, you can see, oh, we've got the Lancers and the Knights finally joining the party. There's a little bit of bickering happening, happening between brothers on the south side, Salami and Crackety. Two players that both very intent on keeping everything, uh, how do we say this? Friendly between the two. More rams are coming in. The Townsend are actually going down for Salami at the moment. Two battering rams on the south make it very difficult for him to push into this. A little bit of repairs come through. Townsend is slowly but steadily going down. If the king comes out and you can see the snipe from Recon. He's looking for it right now. Crackety's worked so hard for it. The king comes out and Recon says, Hey, you guys, you got any kings here? More knights coming through. It's a little bit of a fight. And the lions over the dead gazelle. Salami on the ground gets torn apart. And Crackety got the assassination. He gets the point for the assassination. Recon somehow didn't get it but it's not going to matter because recon says hey thanks for the memories even though they weren't so great he takes out crack and he here and within 10 seconds we've seen three people go down very very quickly wow and just like that we're down to five people how did he get the kill right there i've got absolutely no clue now i'm going to bring in the chat make sure that it's a little bit better hold on a minute let's uh let's <laughs> let's see because I'm gonna I'm gonna try fixing up the chat here as well. Give me a second. I appreciate the stuff going on the screen right now. We just gotta fix this up, make this all pretty for the rest of the game. There you guys go. I'll give that for you. Hopefully that's good enough. All right, we got we got Lancer on night action. Both of those two guys on the south side. A very predictable ending right now. But Crackety manages to snag away a king kill. I got no idea how he managed to to thread that needle. That was impressive from Crackety. So what happened there? So Salami, he lost the town center. The king came down onto the ground and Crackety somehow, despite all of those lances, looking for the king kill, he managed to get the last hit. And if you've ever played a MOBA, you know that it doesn't matter who does the damage. What matters is who gets the last hit. And that's exactly what happened. But now we start to see cavalry taking over the south side of this game. Faye looking to defend her town center. Double Lancer Knight composition. Janissary starting to come out. Hello, Faye. Look at that. Flexing her gold. And now we start to see walls coming up on this top side. I'd love to see it. Love to see a little bit of walls now. Remember, there's a single sacred site on this map. So if you get the idea, hey, I'm going to start walling. Well, then somebody else says, well, that's fine. I'm just going to take the sacred site. Speaking of sacred sites, we haven't seen any of these relics picked up yet. Still full amount of relics in play. Now core starting to move into knights. Everybody moving into cavalry. I'll tell you what. There's a part of me that thinks maybe it's not the population space that's overpowered. Maybe it's the cavalry that's overpowered. Oh man. It's it's really sad to see the ending right down here. You got two guys that are very stubborn. And both of them just saying, hey, I was here first. No, I was here first. No, I was here first. Well, actually, no, none, neither of you are here anymore. So what does it matter? But to be honest... It was a bit crowded down here anyway. I can't help but feel, irrespective where you went, you probably would have ended up fighting early on. Whether you would have gone out, it would have been a different story. But definitely fighting it out would have been the case. If I'm going to be repelling an attack here. And now all of a sudden, Anatan's got a pretty decent spot over on that east side. Taking out GUA. The first kill in the game going to give him a whole bunch of population, extra 50 pop that he can work with. Whether he wants to spend that on 50 more villages, whether he wants to turn that into 50 more units, gives him the flexibility. And now the king going to be thrown down in a keep. Really smart move here. Something that we neglected to see in the last game from a special, a special player. Now, all going to be taken over on that west side. Wham doing a good job. How many TCs is he on? It's just the two TC play from Wham. 
of course, did move into the Royal Institute, so we do see Bloodlines has been picked up for him. And that mass is starting to build up to 37 veteran Royal Knights now. But look at this. We got Core moving out. Yet to hit Imperial Age, but he is booming like a madman. And the stone walls are coming. I love this from Core. I love this. I think if there's any way you want to play a free-for-all like this, it is exactly the way that Core's playing it. Look at this. King, somewhat exposed. All the knights have got their torches out and they say, hey, hey, where you at? Where you at? And it looks like the scout spots all of the knights and he says, actually, don't worry about it. Hey, it, it was a prank. It was a prank. Um, don't shoot. Don't shoot. You know what's crazy? You, have you guys heard about these pranks? Where, like, <laughs> they, they do a prank? <laughs> it doesn't work out well for the prankster, let's just say that much. And there's a part of me that's like, hey, I don't advocate for violence, but couldn't happen to a nicer guy, could it? Anyway, let's, let's move on. Let's move forward. We'll forget about that. So it looks like the classic three town center into the White Tower. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good build order here coming through from court. He does look to put the king inside. So keeping that king nice and safe. And we start to see more stone walls coming up. He's really looking to secure himself here. Now keep in mind, trade is a threat throughout this game. We don't see any trade just yet. But don't be surprised if you look to see Recon move that landmark down into the corner. Maybe start trading. This is a good little avenue that he could look to try and trade onto. But Stonewall's now starting to come up for many a player. The west side now being stonewalled in and two early on favorites that we called out. Core and Wham. Definitely starting to come to fruition here. Starting to flower out. We can see still a couple relics out here, but look at this core. Going to be the one picking them up. Nobody else in the game has actually taken a relic. Except for Core. He's got three in the bag. Fourth one picked up. Fifth one coming out here. He's looking to try and get them all. Bringing back another one. He's got he's got so many relics. You don't want to mess with an English player with this many relics. Was that Imperial Age? I didn't get a message. I didn't get a message. Somebody ship it. Someone clip it. Send it to the devs and say, hey, Drongo didn't get a message. Bakshi Palace comes up in the back of the base. Leaves the back open for a potential wonder. Could be possibility. Down on the south side. A little bit of a lull now. As players begin, begin to gear up for the late game. Keep an eye out on Faye. Ottomans in particular. Powerhouse civilization. Once she maxes out, and she's very close to it. She could look to make enemies. I wouldn't be surprised if she looks to push on Anatand. And take a look at that. If she does, it's going to be a sad story for Anatand, I suspect. Oh, it's exactly where she's moving. Conversion in the center. He goes for it. Uh, it's, it's a ballsy play, Cotton, but unfortunately it doesn't pay off. Anatan being denied the relic. And a lot of knights now moving out. I suspect we've got, yeah, we've got French monks on the way from Wham. And Faye just chilling out for the moment. So ideally for Faye in this position, she wants to try and find a fight. Because remember, Recon has picked up a kill. We've also seen Anatan pick up a kill. And you want to avoid fighting a person once they're above that 200 pop. Because... You've got to remember, when someone's above that 200 pop, that's either 50 extra villagers that they've got powering their economy to reinforce their army, or that's 50 extra army that they're using to kill you. you know, oh, 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 it's too late. It's too late. It's too late. It's not going to matter. Where are the knights? The knights are out of position. No, 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 no. Where's the king? Where's the king? Where's the king? Where's the king? Oh, he's in a keep. He's in a keep. Oh, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Has he got, he's got boiling oil. Oh, oh it's coming through. Oh, it's coming through. He's located the king. He, he is moving with intent. He is moving with tent. Intent. Suspect moving with intent. He comes underneath. He's looking to trap the king. Knights now looking to siege down the keep. French knights are on the way. Village is going to come through the back. The boiling oil is in. And the repair's on the way. He could look to take out a lot of villagers here. They can always look to garrison inside. Reinforcements coming through. Oh my lord, there's a lot of reinforcements. I don't I don't think recon's gonna Oh it's efficient stone! Okay, insufficient stone. Oh, this could be bad. This could be bad. Oh, Wallalol coming in. He could be looking to keep all of his units alive with a Wallalol. The knights are gonna try and pick it off. He does a pretty decent job of repelling those units out, but he's not gonna be able to find it. Needs to pick up another relic. Town center, or rather the keep, continues to get attacked. Plenty of lancers still in here. Looking to dish out damage. Remember that king's gonna pop out the top side. He's doing his best to try and take it out, but it looks like the keep. At about 50% health, will be defended. And Wham does a decent job of repelling this attack. Keeping himself alive a little bit longer. Recon trying his best to dish out damage, but doesn't really find too much. Let's check in back again with Faye. As we've got attacks happening now. And Core 
the only player in the Imperial Age, begins to put pressure on towards his rival in the east side of the map. We begin to see armies being picked apart. Recon in particular, a favorite for this game with the king on the ground and look at Faye. She's out. She's about. She's looking to try and take an enemy out. Slowly but steadily, Wham is walling up. You can see he's gone for really bold stone walls here. And the sacred site in the center is taken. Core triggering a sacred victory. Speaking of sacred victory, who needs sacred victories when you've got elite knights this good? Faye's hit the Imperial Age as well. We'll check in with her and see what landmark she's gone for. She's gone for the Seagate Castle. So could be looking for trade at some point in this game. Knights came through. You can see that the king's got a couple of defensive options about where he looks to go. And now Kor does look to head back. Anatan going to keep that rewall coming through. And now over towards the east side. Faye going to be looking to try and dish out some damage to Anatan. She's looking to get, get her hand, hands dirty. As we approach the 30 minute mark in this game. The same time she's patrolling down towards the west. Meanwhile, on that north side. Now, one of the things I would love to see from Core is just a nice little stone wall across here. Just like that. Just keep the king safe at the back. And make sure you move the king over there. Where's the king at the moment? He's in the white tower. Get that king out of there. All the attacks seem to have been shut down for the moment. And Core just looks to defend his central sacred site with his knights. Strong mobility from the German. And now the age up going to be coming through from Wham. Could be looking to go for a red palace. Red palace, red castle. We've got the white, we've got the white tower. Where does he go with the white, the, the red palace? I feel like you just go in the corner, right? Red palace, wall, wall, landmark, or rather wonder, wall, wall. Sacred site being neutralized. Oh, 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 we've got major damage potentially coming through right now. The king inside the town center. No cannon, in, cannon bombardments just yet. The numbers completely outnumbered right now. Core is looking for a killer cross map up against Recon. Recon obviously going for a failed attack a little bit earlier on his nearest opponent, Wham. I say nearest opponent, I guess potentially his most dangerous threat. King does potentially have a way out here. And you can see Wham now realizing, get off my screen, sacred side objective. I don't want to see you. I want to see the king. Thank you very much. And you can see just now Core looking to rip through all these units. He's got a lot of resources in the bank as well. Now going to start focusing down that main town center. Recon in trouble. And even Faye coming in for a little bit of action. It's a three-way, baby. <laughs> it's not even a three-way. It's a four-way. We got three people vying for this. Oh, poor Recon. More units coming in from the north. The king going to be on the ground. Let's see where he pops out. It's going to be right on top. And we can see Core just looking to try and clean it up. And Core assassinates Recon. Recon, the consequence of spawning is the Mongols, my friend. Is you lack the walls to protect yourself. You lack the keeps to defend your king. And as a result, he falls down. And Core going to be very happy. He picks up an extra 50 population. Looking solid early on in this game. We're 30 minutes through and I say early on. But if there's anything you should know about Core, it's that he likes to take things late. Now slowly Wham moves back towards his base. He may not have noticed, but there's a, a rather large hole in his defenses. Whether this looks to get exploited by Core is going to be a different question. Look at the resources he's got in the bank. 38 knights on the field. 23 in the queue. Enough resources for another 32, and he spams out stables. There's a part of me that thinks, is the, popula is the extra population too strong? No. It's the knights that are too strong. It's crazy to see the dominance that knights give you in a game mode like this. The extra mobility on the defense. The fact that you're able to take out a town center, run away if there's any issues, eliminate a king very quickly in the blink of an eye. And Kor runs back to safety. Could look to even heal up these knights. He's got no abbey though. That's another thing to note. Check in with Wham over on this west side as the Imperial Age Up has come through. He's gone with the Red Palace. For anybody who's seen the Red Palace before, they'll know this landmark does not mess around when it comes to defending. I've actually changed the Red Palace a little bit recently. It now actually provides a arbalist attack 
for every single town center and every single keep. So it means that this town center also gets an Arbalist attack. And you might not think that that's a big deal. But what it actually does is it means that you can't ram those buildings anymore. Because the Arbalist attack destroys the ram. I think the ram's got 50 armor. So it means that it does 10 damage instead of 1. And it attacks pretty quickly, the Arbalist. It's a little bit of a fight over the sacred site. Anatan continue to expanding, expand with walls. He's up to Imperial Age now. And he's gone with the High Armory. I don't know how I feel about this. A little bit dangerous for Anatan to go into the High Armory here. Now, what's great about the High Armory is it reduces the cost of your Siege. We're talking about 20% reduction on Siege, which is wonderful for 1v1. Also gives you some unique technologies, which are great in the late game, especially that extra, uh, uh, extra damage on Rams. You can see an extra 50%. Also gives them a nice little passive heal. But what you're missing out on is the Spaskaya Tower. The Spaskaya Tower allows you to build stone walls as the Rus. It also gives you a landmark with 10,000 health to keep that king safe. And it means that you can throw them down, throw that Spaskaya Tower down inside a keep and keep it safe. And this is what I love to see, though. This is... Oh, I love this so much coming out. He's making a labyrinth of defense. You come for the first keep... He moves the king into the second. You come for the second, there's a third. When you come for the third, well, there's 17 back doors that you could have gone through. And now we see a little bit of a cleanup on that north side. Faye really yet to push out and do a lot of damage. I think her window is definitely passed here. She had a window to, to attack Anatan, and I think she could have done a lot of damage if, if, the, if, the, if the tempo had been right. But she herself is now looking across the map. It feels like she's a little bit lost at the moment. Building up a nice network of outposts, though. Slowly expanding her vision towards the center. Now those elite spears going to be looking to move out here. 95 knights on the field for core. A huge economy. And he just says, you know what? I, I don't care that you've got elite spears. I'll take you on. I'll take you on. I, I'm, not, I'm not fussed. I'm not phased. Let's go for it. Let's do it. Meanwhile, Faye. She's, she's looking to pick up reinforcements here. She's, she's on a patrol out here. Looking to find it. Meanwhile, all the forces for Core, they're just out here. No, nothing in queue for him. He's cleaning house, though. Streltsy going to be looking to defend. And Core says, hey, you got any of those kings around here? Central Sacred Site now going to be get, getting triggered here by Faye. A little bit dangerous to draw attention to yourself, especially in a free-for-all game with four people still alive. But the Knights do a bit of a run by realizing that maybe you don't want to attack into a choke point like that and begin working down the fortified palisades cannon emplacements not through they're very expensive in this game mode intentionally designed that way to discourage their usage a very very strong emplacement and the king straight away on the move look at that straight away he moves on to greener pastures and now those knights looking to come around is he keeping track that's the question where, where is his king I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, I'm wondering if anybody in the chat knows. Is there a cooldown on treason? The ability treason that the kings have got. Is there a cooldown on that? Or can you just infinitely treason all the time? Of course, be, because Kor just let a knight, uh, let a king go. So if there's no cooldown... It means that he's just... He's he's letting the king... Okay, so he did end up stonewalling up towards the north. So that's that's solid. I'm a little bit worried about Kor. Don't get me wrong. His position's really good. I'm just not sure about him as a player. Hmm. It's kind of like having a three-year-old in the driver's seat. It's like, you've got a Maserati, but you're three years old. You're probably just going to crash it off a bridge. I don't know. What do we do with this guy? <laughs> For anybody wondering... I I'm memeing Kor. I'm memeing him. I love him. I love Kor. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, unfortunately, he, he's a good friend, not as good as a player. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Core. I love you. And he gets trapped inside. Core stuck on the inside. Oh, poor Core. Poor Core. The center of the map. The sacred site keeps ticking, but I don't think this is a real attempt from Faye. I think she's just looking to pick up a little bit more passive gold. Now, where are the kings? Let's do a king update right now. So, king is in the Seagate Castle. Now, Faye is stonewalling towards the front, but her stone walls are a little bit open, and we do actually see markets have come through now for Wham. So Wham is officially trading. It is happening. How much How much are we talking on these traders, though? Let's have a look and see. 124 food. He's actually going for food. 
Wham is trading and he's getting food in. At least on some of the traders. Knights now, Lance is now coming down to the south side. A little bit of a difference on the health of these units, about, about 40. So it does start to stack up over the course of a fight. I'd love to see Faye with a few more a few more Janissaries out, but population space becomes an issue. Would you rather a Janissary or a Knight? And I think the answer is everybody just want, prefers Knights. So we see them becoming this dominant unit that just start to take over games. Now up towards the north side, look at this. Hand cannon is starting to come through from core. So focusing a little bit less on mobility, a bit more on penetration. Let's continue moving north. Seven minutes on that sacred site victory for Faye. She's starting to drop down a few more outposts here. The poor, the poor person's, uh, the poor person's keep. Look at all, look at all of these. This is, hey mum, can we have a keep? We've got keeps at home. And these are the keeps. Uh, doesn't look like Faye's going to be keeping them alive for much longer though. Uh, yikes. That's, that's a lot of knights. But at least it's a distraction. And Wham was trading. But Faye says, well, you can trade, but just not over here. I'm, I'm not allowing it. I'm not permitting it. Nice little distraction here by Faye. So I can't help but feel like this was a pretty smart investment from her to force the enemy units towards the center of the map. But it looks like she will get cleaned up. There, there's a pretty solid mass here. Mangonels actually might be the... A Mangonels the go-to against this mass of knights? When you think about it right, if you've got 10 Mangonels, you're just one-shotting all of the knights. That could work. The, the damage here from the mangoes isn't that isn't that terrible. Please, please. <laughs> Alright, calling out to my mod maker, Woprock. He does a lot of good work. Is there a way for us to remove this message from the UI? I never want to see that message on my screen again. Oh god, I hate that message. It stays for so long. It's just like, for anybody wondering, a sacred site has been taken and it's now your job to neutralize that sacred site. And then it gets neutralized. It's like, everybody who was looking to neutralize the sacred site, it's now been neutralized. You no longer are required to neutralize the sacred site. That, that's my impression of the uh, the devs putting that up there. Hopefully that gets fixed. And Fane now actually looking to drop down a keep on the central sacred site. Wall's slowly coming up down here for her. She's managed to clean up all of the markets. So where does Wham look to trade now? He's, he's still trading in the same spot. Faye moving more units out. The Great Bombard's out as well. Have we got a little bit of an attack towards the north? Everybody just biding their time. Now remember, the longer this game goes, the better it goes for Core. He's sitting on five relics. Now I'm assuming Core's the kind of guy who picks up his special upgrades. Let's see if we can find his monastery. There it is. He's got his Tithe Barns in. I like the fact he's got one relic in each of these monasteries. Shows what, what kind of giga chat he is. But the longer this game goes, it, the better it gets for Core. He's got enclosures. He's got a really nice economy. Where is the stone though? He's got, he's got another 1200 stone here. He can afford a wonder. He can definitely afford a wonder. And now the sacred site in the center. He's going to get captured here. Faye once again looking to trigger that sacred victory. Red palace, big walls around it. A little bit of a, almost a little bit of a mistake I'd be tempted to say here. Not just leaving the red palace for walls. Bombard's moving forward. Could they be the answer to the Knights? We've seen a lot of Knights spam throughout this game. And Atan, one of the few players not to move into Knights, instead going into Spearman Streltsy. And now the Sacred Victory is approaching once again. <laughs> Wham! Says, hey, you're trying to wall down here. Um, I've got a bit of a an issue with that. I'm, I'm going to throw down my own wall. So Faye has to resort to a bit of a star defense, star fort defense here. And now over on that east side, look at the hand cannon here numbers here. Triple bombard moving out as well. Faye just looking to camp it up on this central sacred site, really looking for this. But we might have a problem. Kings in the Seagate castle. No stone walls. Means that there is no way that these knights are stopped before they find the king. King could look to make a run for it. Unfortunately, her wall is incomplete. A little bit like the 2001 hit single from the Backstreet Boys. It's a song I love to sing. You catch me in a karaoke booth. First song that's coming on. It's Backstreet Boys, baby. It's incomplete. 
Classic for the ages. 62 Knights now looking to make their way through. Zwam, no. King's ready. Surely Wham knows she's keeping her king somewhere in the back of the base. And up towards the north side, hand cannon is. Looks like the outpost does get taken out, so they're not going to get that extra attack speed, but they do have the critical mass. 46 hand cannon is. Knights breaking through as well. Numbers looking really good, but at the same time, the counterattack's coming in. A lot of knights down here. Seagate Castle, still got the king inside. Boiling oil's through. Does Wham pop the king? We don't see it just yet, but I think he might know. I think he might know that the king is there. Definitely we'll see that it's been exposed. Attack still happening on that top side. Core sitting in a position where he could potentially justify a wonder. Those knights. Where are those knights heading? The knights are on a mission. The question is that they, they don't know what the mission is. Uh, is it the landmarks? It could be. Is it the keep? It could be. Is it the sacred site? It could be. It's definitely not the king. That much we know. Wham, obviously not reading the, the, wait, is, I was going to say, hold on, is Wham going for Anatan here? It looked like he was doing a little bit, oh my god, the Great Bombards! Great Bombards are out, but they're going to just get obliterated in the blink of an eye here. All the knights making it through onto the back line, they get off one volley and immediately get destroyed. Trying to get the second shot off, not going to find it. Second Bombard set comes out, manages to find a connection, but all the knights here for Wham getting distracted by the units. Faye managing to follow, find up reinforcements. More great bombards. Faye with the bombard spam coming out now. The defense is good for Faye. Those French royal knights, I think we found the counter to them. It's mass siege. I, I just want to see this game mode develop into like 49 mangonels. You know it's going to be Beastie who does it. He's like, I, I worked it out, guys. The counter to 150 knights is 150 mangonels. Could you imagine it? Oh, God. Could, could you imagine it? I want to see it. Actually, if there's anybody who could do it right now, it's Anatand. The cheaper siege. What actually counters 150 mangonels? Maybe 150 sprinkles? But then you've got 150 sprinkles. And what are you going to do with 150 sprinkles? You couldn't, you couldn't tickle a toddler with 150 sprinkles. Core pushing through, but he's going to get pushed back. Not really a serious push here. Keep in mind, there's not, not any production on the front line. Ideally, Core wants to avoid making these horsemen as well. Wants to focus on men at arms, maybe crossbows, even lances are good. He's got plenty of gold in the bank. So looking to spend that. Keep that, uh, keep that wood there, just in case. You can see him starting to stack it up now. Could be looking for a wonder. Especially with the sacred victory in play. There's a real threat that Core could be going for a wonder victory and could use that to distract and delay. Outpost coming up for Wham on the backside. Sprinkle number starting to build up here. We see him obviously realizing that there's a lot of siege coming out from Faye. Uh, maybe we might need to make Sprinkles. But now it seems like a bit of a cohesive effort happening towards the middle. And if there's one thing I'd say to Faye, it would be, Faye, you got to bring more villagers to these parties. I'm seeing like two villagers trying to build the Great Wall of China. And it's still going up. At, at this point in the game, it's still going up. It's a bit tough. Bombards. Great bombards. Firing off. <laughs> that poor horseman. He, did, he never stood a chance. Genissary's firing off as well. Looking to try and cover the great bombards. We'll be able to find it here. Keep in mind, Faye hasn't taken out a player this game. So she's only on 200 population. Those bombards doing work. There's a bit of a hole towards the front of her base as well. She's going to try... Do her best to keep it alive for the moment. And that wall still not through. Arbolatria going to be meeting those horsemen. And what's Core looking for? It's just running a couple horsemen through. Looking to try and scout out the enemy. A lot of villagers here. 66 vills. And great bombards jumping inside the walls. And look at this. We got knights. Faye managing to find a connection here up against the Arbolatria. Got the gambesons through. No PV shields, not against these. You don't need that ranged armor. A beautiful micro coming through from Wham. It's found a nice little choke point at the back here. You can see how much trouble Faye's having to get on top of all these units. Wham continuing to move them back. It looks like he will be able to grind them down. At the same time... Oh my god, the Seagate Castle! It's under pressure. There's a lot of knights here. 32 knights working down the Seagate Castle. 
She's going to need to pull villagers if she wants to keep it alive. Now the, the vills get pulled. Oh my lord. The vills get pulled. There we go. At the same time, under attack towards the middle of the map. Springles looking to fire off towards that siege. King is under threat. But more reinforcements are coming out. Genesary's here. It looks like she should be able to save the day. As long as she's able to protect this top side, she should be okay. And towards the center of the map, we can see Core is moving through. Doesn't look like there's any siege here for the moment. Bombards should be able to hold the line. Over towards the west side. Vil's getting cleaned up. Back towards the base of Faye. Everything looks fine for the moment. Still a distinct lack of internal shell for her. It's really key to see that internal shell. You see it right here. We've got an internal shell here protecting the king. Another internal shell towards this top side. The not noticeable absence is that king. I don't actually know where that king is at the moment. Four core in the north of the map. Oh, he's actually on the move right now towards that shell. So you've got that internal shell that keeps the king safe. Three minutes until sacred defeat. Faye trying her best here. I'm curious whether the other players are... What they're thinking. Whether this is a major threat or not. Enetan going to be looking to work down his, work down this wall. Vil's going to be pulled to repair. Bombard's in position. Faye with only a handful of units here. And everybody making their way towards the central sacred site. Bombards jump outside the wall, but it's a little bit too late. She's trying to keep him alive. Manages to get back inside the wall. Double keep in the center here. Definitely going to hold off quite a few units. And at the same time, more knights looking to come through, but the bombards fire off. She's going to get them outside the wall. If she's able to get them outside the wall, she can keep them alive. Beautifully done by Faye. Those bombards come through. She doesn't find the angle, though. She's got to hit that angle. First keep under pressure. More battering rams coming in from the south. Two minutes until sacred defeat. All the horsemen on the sacred site. They idle out for the moment. Bombards firing off. Abel Atreya looking to try and take them down. Manganels is also getting in on the action. Faye brings in villagers. She holds the sacred site for a little bit longer. She needs to clear out all of these units. But hold, oh, there's so many units. I don't think it's likely that she holds this. The same time behind the scenes, the Genissaries were trying to make their way towards the center. But Faye not going to be able to find it today. The keeps on the sacred site get cleaned up by Anatand. And Faye slowly but steadily loses control of the central sacred site. A bold effort from Faye. She's netted a lot of gold from this. But unfortunately, in the end, not able to find it. The sacred site is neutralized. And the knights make their way once again towards the Seagate Castle. It's picked up a little bit of extra health since the last time we checked in. Court Architects has come through. She's really looking to try and keep her head above water in this game. Multiple raids have come through. And look at this English base in the north. Core approaching 6,000 stone. He's got the stone in the front of his base if he wants to. 1,200 stone here. And these knights once again looking. Looming, you can see. Wham wants a kill. He's only on 200 pop. It's so important that he picks up a kill. He's facing up against two other players in the game that are sitting on 250. A significant advantage over the top of anybody else. Core actually sitting on 196 at the moment. He's thrown away a fair bit of population. May have deleted Vils. I'm not sure exactly what's happened. We can see he's got intense. Over towards this east side. Both players actually looking to forward. On each other. Big army coming out from Anatan here. 69. Streltsy. Nice. Now once again, Faye. Being tested. Wham looking to see whether she's paying attention. And something tells me she is. There's a lot of units in position. Genissaries in particular. Going to be able to crush through these knights. Not even close. Ripping them to shreds. They got their heels on. It won't matter. We don't even have to watch. We know the outcome of that fight. And I love the way that Wham is leaving the front of his base open. He's like, you know what? I'm not scared. I'm not scared. You want to come in? Bring it. I got a red palace. I got stone walls. There's nothing that's going to stop you. Or rather, I should say nothing that's going to stop me. But now the ram's going to be moving up. And a going to be looking to attack on both sides of the market here. Or of the trading post, rather. Towards the front. Faye finally looking to wall in her own front. Everybody just biding their time here. D 
Definitely a bit more of a campy game. I didn't expect we'd see it on this map. I thought if there's any map that we're going to see camping on, it's going to be Blue Mountains. But it looks like Uluru today is developing a little bit more. Hand cannon is moving forward. Could look to take the high ground here. A little, little bit like Obi-Wan. Begins to slowly move units up. There we go. High ground gets taken and you can see how little damage is going to be done. Extra attack speed together with that extra range. It's going to crush through all those units. And now the cavalry from Wham gets forced back. Villagers sharing a gold vein over towards the west side. Just like you'd share a, a tea or a coffee. You share a gold. Streltsy looking to clean up the hand cannon. There's a little bit of a mistake right here from Core. I'm not sure if he was... Uh, it definitely feels like he probably wasn't paying attention. Looking to pump out a whole bunch of units. Remember, he's still got that 6k stone sitting in the bank. But starting to lose out on that wood. He's got plenty of wood back here, though. If, he ever, if ever he feels the need, he can move into it. Bombard numbers are pretty high. Hand cannon numbers are looking good as well. He's got that network of Citadel's bonus. Should be able to deal effectively with this. Anatan going to be trying to crush through the front. But remember, you're, you're fighting against the best defensive sieve in the game. A little bit of a multi-pronged attack. All reinforcements going to be looking to seep through on this wall. I don't know whether... I'm pretty sure that stone wall has yet to be built. Yeah, we can see them coming through now. And the Streltsy actually take the wall of core. Down towards the south side. We see the wall has been opened up. Wham was looking to trade, but Faye says, no, you're not trading. And take your siege. Get get on. Go on. Get gut. She pushes him back as well. So we got a, we got a little bit of a 1v1 on both sides of the map here. Anatan v. Core, Wham v. Faye. And Core holds on. Let's do a bit of a king assessment. Let's see where our kings are. Bakshi Palace in the north. Red Palace in the west. On the south, the Seagate Castle. And I suspect it's right here. Nope, 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 nope. Ah, there we go. <laughs> in the east corner of the map. Anatan's king. Safe for now. Faye under pressure on this west side. Big push coming through. Big push coming through right now. Maganel's looking to reach the battle as well. Bombard's on the backside. Core got to look to protect these. A lot of resources going into these units. So for anybody, what's, ha what's happening back here with Anatan's king? The idea is it's an escape route from one to the other to the next to the next. He's always got an option to come out the bottom side, do a little bit of a fool ya, move up towards the next one, up towards the next one. He's always got a backup plan. He's got plan A, he's got plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, plan F, and plan G. A true onion enjoyer. So it's a classic case of the king is in another castle. Reinforcements being pumped to the front. Korn needs to get an outpost up here. Get that extra attack speed. And we see once again, Faye looking to reconnect with the sacred site. She once lost that connection with. Hoping to grow strong with the Sacred Site. Build a relationship, a lasting relationship with this Sacred Site. Obviously all players in the game looking to try and make that connection. The question is going to be whether it's lasting. Is it going to be a meaningful connection? Or is it just going to be surface level? I'm going to take a swig of my Red Bull. We're not sponsors, but we might as well be. Oh, the Bombard's firing off. Good little connection here. All right, it's time for the Red Bull. Hold on. All right, there we go. Okay, I think I'm good. Huge fight up towards the north. Still happening. Anatan on 4.4k gold. Up against Core, who's also on 4.2k gold. So I think it really becomes a question of, of attrition in a game like this. And what's interesting is that you've got the two players in the north that are both on the extra population. 250 versus 250. And on the south side, you've got the two players without the extra population. 200 versus 200. So it's an even battle for all intents and purposes. Springholds now. Springholds firing off from the back line. First of the Bombards goes down. Faye going to be looking to fire out. Doesn't find a connection. And all those Springholds 
Managing to do absolute work here. And Faye really starting to struggle. She's down to 180 pop. She's got plenty of resources in the bank, but it's mainly food. It's mainly wood. And a 10. Overwhelming his opponent in the north. Claw being pushed back here. Trying his best to keep his head above the water. The rewall comes through. Core on 6k stone. The question is going to be if he goes for a land or a wonder, is he going to be able to hold? I don't think he is. I feel like he's barely holding against Enetan. He's down to 16k food. Didn't this guy used to have 30k food in the bank? Where's it all gone? Wham. Also going to be a potential threat. The question is going to be, where does he get stone from? There's a little bit of stone up here. Should be stone down towards the south side. You never know, though. Another keep gets thrown down. Wham. Not looking to move into a wonder just yet. Stone wall goes down. I don't know what it went down to. Is there a bombard emplacement? Yeah, there's a, a cannon emplacement. Numbers. Building in the north. Locked in a bit of a stalemate here. This Faye starts to build up with the elite Sapahi. Up against plenty of units that she counters. In fact, countering all of the units here. Springholds, Mangoes. Arbolatrie does pretty well against the uh, against the horseman. The siege turns around, fires down upon her. And the keep looks like it might go down as soon as it comes up. Indeed it does. She's going to try and repair through it. I don't like her odds. Or rather, Wham's odds. Oh, we managed just to keep it alive. Never mind. It's, just, it's going down. I'm yelling timber. You've got to move. you got to dance. I, th I think that's the lyrics. I'm pretty sure that's the lyrics. It might be a case of bone apple tip. Sprinkle's starting to move forward. Wham looking to pick up another bombard. We'll find it. And Wham definitely struggling here in the late game against Faye. She's doing a good job, honestly. She's really taking it to Wham. Springled though. Managing to find it. Look at the units. Managing to break through. She's picking up a lot of siege here for free. The center of the map. It looks like Anatan has realized once again. <sighs> I have to go deal with this damn sacred site again. Please stop taking the sacred site. You're not going to get a sacred victory. Stop trying to make it happen. Outpost taken down. In the blink of an eye. A little bit of a king update for you. Seagate Castle. King. Keep. King. Berkshire Palace. King. Red Palace. King. Posturing on the west side core. Has the resources. For a wonder. 44k food in the bank. 149 villages. Definitely still got a way to go before his position is secured. He's added in a lot of farms here. You can see he's sitting on six and a half thousand food a minute. And once again, another game. Faye is struggling with gold. 166 gold a minute. It's not a good time to be a gold enjoyer. A little, a little bit of gold out here. I don't even think she's got the ability to trade. The silver tree's been sieged down, so she can't trade to the landmark. And I don't think these two would have got a market up. She could have technically... No, she couldn't have. Because Wham was trading down here. But Wham's alive, so she can't trade with Wham. If she kills Wham, she can trade with Wham's markets. Sacred Titan in the center. We, we weren't even watching at this point. The likelihood that it, that it gets taken is incredibly high. Now there's a little bit of a party on the sacred site. Faye still technically holds the sacred site. Now I wonder. If two people are standing on the sacred site, it holds it for Faye. It's not neutralizing the sacred site. If two enemies are on the sacred site, it was it was holding it in Faye's possession. But fortunately, it looks like Core realizes that, falls back for the moment, and says, you know what? I'll let you decap it. We're all good. But look at this. Keeps starting to come up. Enetan making plenty of keeps this game. Oh no. Wham 
Oops, going for a proxy. Now, Faye's always got the option to trade with the neutral trading post as well. That's another thing to note. So she could look to trade with the, the neutral trading post here. I don't actually... I didn't realize there's a neutral trading post here. Why is there a neutral trading post here? Oh, no, oh it, never mind. There's one on both sides. I thought there was only four in the center. Maybe the map got an update. If that's the case, you know what? I don't actually mind that. That's not terrible. A little bit of... I mean, Wham, Wham's a big trader, right? He loves to trade. So Faye should be calling that out. She should be saying, hey guys, Wham's trading. I scouted him. He's got like 48,000 traders. Faye gets spotted out though. Faye spots all the units moving in. Seagate Castle will be pressured. We cross the one hour mark in the center of the map. And a 10 might be looking for a little bit of a sneaky sacred site victory here. Now, if Call is playing this correctly, there is a world where he waits for the sacred victory, builds his own wonder, and then directs everybody to attack the sacred site. Buys himself enough time to delay that wonder from coming up. But often, you will see negotiations happen where people say, no, you delete your wonder or I don't attack the sacred site. So you've got to be very careful. I remember a game, a famous game Beastie played early on. He did the exact same thing. They forced him to delete his wonder. A little bit of a counter-attack on the backside here. Looking for the Seagate Castle. Through the front as well. Looks like we might have a bit of a double up here. Core running through. Whole bunch of horsemen. King under pressure. Not a whole lot of units back here. I'm not too worried about him at the moment. And over on that west side, the trade still continues. Wham is trading. 124 gold apiece. He's a very happy trader. 3k stone in the bank as well. He's mined out the stone that was here in the center. And now Wham going to be looking to push through here. A lot of units here from Faye. She's got plenty of resources in the bank. Now what's going on with Core in the north? He's down to 180 population. Is he looking to mo make some vills? Is that what his plan is? He's not training villagers. He's training horsemen. I think he's going for a snipe attempt. The question is, who's he going to look for the snipe attempt on? Oh, there's actually... The, the Seagate's under a lot of pressure here. Faye's still doing a pretty good job of cleaning up. But look at this. Cannons down on the south side. Looking to work through these villages. Wham's managed to build plenty of siege workshops down here. Attacking the front at the same time. The trade is coming through. Faye looking to do a little bit of cheeky trade. We've seen her go for trade before. But now all those Sipahi are going to be moving down to the south side. Looks like she'll probably clean this up. The front will also get cleaned up. Oh, yeah. Core, interestingly, not really going for like a whole bunch of, of horsemen here. Because Anatan definitely stands out. To, to me, Anatan seems like the best target here. You come break through this gate. Immediately look to bring your units here. If you don't catch him... See, the, the problem is he can just keep moving on. And every single time you move on, you have to go through boiling oil. Boiling oil. Boiling oil. And if you look to try and go around a keep, he'll just stay in the keep. So Core just biding his time. Definitely in the prime position, though. This is the thing. Core, I, I feel like Core, he's somewhat in control of this game. I just can't... I, I, help the, I can't help but feel like he just doesn't know it. Lots of production over on the east flank, or rather west flank of his base. East flank's got plenty as well. This is definitely what he needs. Does he look for another... He could potentially look for another layer of walls. Sacred site now being taken in the center. And a 10 actually camping this up. You know what? This is starting to look scary. So right now, Core could 100% go for a wonder. I think a wonder from Core here is probably the right time. Put the wonder down because you can direct your enemies. You can be like, hey guys, uh, now is a great time to go and, and neutralize this sacred. This is this is a real threat. This is a big problem. We've got to deal with this now. And then you throw down the wonder and you're like, what wonder? I, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. He's got enough. He's got enough. I'm watching. Do it, Core. Give the people what they want. Yep, yep. 
Anatan really struggling here. It's going to be up against three armies. And you can see they, they appreciate this is a real threat here. Cannon emplacements on all of these keeps in the center. Spring on emplacements looking to come through on the outposts. I just realized they're called outposts and not wooden fortress. I wonder why that is. Big attacks coming in. A lot of units on this sacred site. Plenty of resources in the bank. He's down to 80 villagers as well. Anatand actually looking for a sacred victory here. That's a lot of keeps on a single sacred site. Still no wonder from Core. It's a wonder what this guy's up to. Sacred site being held. Anatan with a nice little mass he's got here. There's a part of me that just wishes he'd, he'd demolish these walls and put a keep in, but they're kind of doing work for him here as well from that north side. We'll delay his enemy a bit longer. And Faye looking to push through. A labyrinth of walls. Core with plenty of resources in the bank. Still, still we don't see it. Plenty of production now getting thrown out into the middle here. Wham realizing, okay, we got we to gotta go hard, guys. We've got eight minutes. Still a long time. Anatan, got to be careful. Don't don't chase too far, Anatan. Don't chase too far. You don't want to lose your units like this. You're, you're fighting away from your keeps. You're losing value. All these units could be fighting under a keep. Bombards moving forward. Horsemen looking to try and take them out. Core still sitting with plenty of resources in the bank. Sacred site now threatened. He had units on the site. So this, the timer is still going to tick. Mangonel numbers building here. Seven Mangonels. Numbers still looking really good. Cannon emplacements on all of the keeps. Spring on emplacements on all of the outposts. Almost all of them. More outposts coming up. Mangonel's firing off. As long as he's able to fight these players one by one, he's going to be happy. And Core looks to push him. He just took out Fate Chair. Now Anatan looks to try and take out Core. Keep in mind, Core doesn't have a lot of production. He's trying to get the hand cannoneers on top of the, the stone wall. But he's got a little bit of a blockage. The Manganels! The Manganels off the top rope! Oh my god, it's terrible! Core just gets absolutely meat grinded! Oh my god, the Manganels! Oh, it's disgusting! Oh my god, it's terrible for Core! He loses everything in the blink of an eye! The Manganels! Oh my lord! Don't mess with the mango! You thought it was a delicious fruit? You were wrong. You were mistaken. It's neither a fruit nor delicious. It is a siege weapon capable of destroying your army in the blink of an eye. And now Anatan is a serious threat. Six minutes remain. And there's a part of me that thinks there is an actual genuine chance Anatan may be able to take out a 3v1 here because of the AoE damage that he's got. He's able to utilize all of the labyrinth of walls to funnel his enemy into these positions and then destroy them with AOE. And now Faye looks to push in from the south. It's the classic, the classic play where they're not pushing in together. They need to be pushing in together. They need to be coordinating this. Hey guys, let's all attack at five minutes remaining. Hey guys, let's all attack now. Very, very simple. You wanna know what's crazy though? Is the perfect time for core to put down a wonder is right now. It's like, hey guys, we have to kill him right now, but also I'm building a wonder, but don't worry, I'm not gonna win. The real winner is the sacred victory. Watch out for that. And then Wham's just like, hey guys, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna sit in my base unless Core deletes that wonder. And that's where the fun comes in. Oh gosh. Oh no, oh no, oh no! Oh, Wham's going for the kill. Wham looking to take out an ally in his time of need. Oh God. Oh God. Seagate Castle under threat. The King's got one chance to pop out. King's out on the ground. King's out on the ground. Faye not paying attention. Faye not paying attention. The King's gonna go down. Wham assassinates Faye in a cruel twist of events. And he picks up an extra 50 population for himself. Absolutely sneaky. King snipe coming in from Wham. 100% cannon and 100% Cheeky. Very... <laughs> I'm not going to say disrespectful, but a little bit disrespectful. Look at this. Look at this. Core says, you know what? You can have the sacred site, mate. 
<laughs> go for it. I, I, I've got, I've got bigger plans. Dun it, 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 dun it. Remember, there's no Spaskaya here. With no Spaskaya, there's no stone walls. With no stone walls, there's no, no, nothing to restrict this. There is nothing at all to restrict this right now. The horsemen come through. Where's the king? He's in the first castle. All the horsemen making their way through. Still, we don't see that wonder coming in from Core. The first wall under pressure. Remember, he's going to make Core run the gauntlet here. The king pops out. He's going to move down into the second keep. A lot of units here. 111 horsemen. In the center of the map, though. Wham is looking to put on pressure. A lot of mangoes here. Big shots on the mango. Oh my god, they do so much damage. Oh, mangonels are actually the counter to everything. Oh, the king! Oh, the king! The king manages to... Oh, he pops the movement speed. He's out of there. See you later, mate. I'm onto a new... I'm onto something better. But look at this. This is the boiling oil. The boiling oil coming through right now. And a 10. And he s escapes through to the next one. He's making him run the gauntlet right now. Core, he's slowly but steadily losing health on all these units. And a three minutes until sacred defeat comes through. He works towards the next one. He's only got one more keep to go. No, I, I take it back. He's got another two. But the boiling oil. Look at the boiling oil. He can... <laughs> It works! It's working! It's actually working! The madman is doing it! <laughs> I can't believe it! Core, he's maxed out still, but he's losing <laughs> He's doing it! Oh, there's so many keeps! And now the boiling oil for the next keep! It takes... <laughs> oh, he does it! Anatan, you're a, cru a cruel genius! A crazy genius! You, there's, there's a lot of brains, there's a lot of... Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, it might, it might just be the best thing I've seen in this game. What an absolute king escape right there. Anatan holding the sacred site. And my, my real, my question, it just comes back to Wham. Did, if, if Wham had invested more resources in the center of the map here, instead of killing Faye, would the outcome be different? Because there's a part of me that thinks Anatan has got way too many resources, too much of a defense here. If, if he wants to try and... If he wants to hold this, it looks like he's going to be able to do it. But you can see right now, where I'm going to start pushing through. Looking to try and clean this up. Plenty of bombards. The keep does go down. It looks like they might be able to take the sacred site, but the reinforcements are coming. Oh, God, the reinforcements. Oh, Lord, the reinforcements are coming. They're making their way towards it. They need Mangonels to clear this out, but they've got no AOE in this siege. It's all single target. And the Streltsy stay on the sacred site. Nothing here to contest it. The sacred timer keeps ticking. 90 seconds to go. Wham and Core looking to try and take this game away from Anatan. He's in prime position up against three players. He held this sacred site for 10 minutes. Still... One minute remains, but more reinforcements make it to the center. He's maxed out. 250 poppies down to 36 villages. It is reinforcements. Oh my God, it's reinforcements on the way towards the center. He's looking to try and blockade and prevent anything from coming through. The lack of mangonels is really what's doing it right now. And finally, the mangonels show up. One minute to go until sacred site defeat comes through. Wham is holding on for dear life. Core pushing in from the north side. He went for the king snipe. It wasn't successful. He tries again. The men at arms are looking to intercept reinforcement. He needs them on the middle. Look at the horseman. Anatan, an absolute MVP comes out of this game looking incredible. The king surviving. The sacred site denying the enemy any position on this. Look at him. He's just saying, you stay off the sacred site. This is mine. This is mine. He's maxed out. 250 pop. This is an insanely big brain play from him. 26 seconds left to go. As long as he's got units alive on this sacred site, he wins this game. I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Core with nothing present here. Wham, slowly but steadily losing it. Anatan will be your victor in game number two in an ultimate clutch survival of the fittest. The king lived. Anatan lived. And the sacred site is captured. He is your victor here in game number two, week number two. It's Anatan, baby, on the Rus. Good game, well played. What an absolute masterpiece from Anatan. By far the best defense I've ever seen. Forcing his enemies to run a gauntlet of boiling oil. The king survives against an incredible snipe attempt from Kor. A cheeky attack from Wham causes the death of his ally, Faye. And as a result, Anatan holds onto the sacred side. A beautiful game there from Anatan. Incredibly well played. Clutch deleting of villagers right at the end there just to guarantee he's got that extra military population.
You can see it. There was a point there where he was closing in on that 200 village account. Military account. You can see all the way at the end. He was maxed out. He was having a great time. Fellas, if you've enjoyed this game, well, I got good news. There's plenty more coming up for you if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching this on Twitch, we're done for the night. But anybody on YouTube, we got more games coming up. This has been game number two in round number two. We got game three, game number four coming up for you after this. And of course, there'll be plenty more action coming up next week. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Outback Octagon. And we'll catch you in the next one.